I speak today in a city where four years ago a majority of its residents voted for Barack Obama to be president of the United States. It's a city in a county where four years ago a majority of its residents voted for Barack Obama to be president of the United States. And I proudly stand with these young people in support of the re-election of President Obama as president of the United States of America. I'm here to speak primarily, and I promise you, it, since it's chilly, not too long, about the very important issue of jobs. In, in about an hour, uh, at an event that apparently is closed to the press, uh, uh, presidential candidates will be in hyperbolic fashion talking about uh, our country and their claims and assertions about what they might do in the future. We have a leader in our country. He resides at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Barack Obama. And I believe that when all of the electioneering is over, that the citizens of our country will decide that the leader America needs during this challenging time is a leader that we have right now, Barack Obama. Ronald Reagan in 1980 asked this question, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Well, let's ask that question now. Are we better off now than we were four years ago? Four years ago, America, in a recession Barack Obama did not create, four years ago, our country was losing 770,000 jobs a month. Now, the private sector has created jobs in December for the 22nd straight month, and unemployment is at its lowest level since President Obama's first month in office. We've added 2.6 million private sector jobs as of September of 2011. There's much more work to do. President Obama just last week called on American companies to invest in America at a White House, House forum on insourcing American jobs. His message to business leaders was simple figure out what you need to bring jobs back to our country and make them successful and let President Obama what is needed and he will see that it is done. When President Obama took office, he addressed immediate economic crisis and laid the foundation for a U.S. economy recovery to innovate and outbuild the world. President Obama worked to pass the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which included a tax cut for 95% of working families, tax cuts for small businesses, emergency funding for 266,000 jobs in public schools, investments in clean energy that created and saved over 224,000 jobs through the end of 2010. American manufacturers, this is so important, what we led the world in doing, making things. American manufacturers now have grown by 334,000 jobs in the past two years. And in fact, amazingly, manufacturing in America is growing faster than it has since 2001, growing by 5.7% each year since 2009. To level the playing field, President Obama signed the American Invents Act, legisl patent legislation of uh, modernization to make it easier for people's discoveries to be turned into to job-creating businesses. He made the tough and politically unpopular decision to extend emergency rescue loans to the American automobile manufacturing industry saving 1.4 million jobs, and very important, these weren't just the jobs at the auto manufacturing plants. President Obama's courageous leadership, and there was lots of opposition to this, the emergency rescue loans to Chrysler and GM, 
President Obama's leadership also saved the shattering of automobile dealerships in every community in our country. And now we see the auto industry is robust and amazingly next month General Motors that was facing bankruptcy and President Obama had the courage to say we needed to make the emergency rescue loans and GM and Chrysler pay the loans back. The GM is now poised next month to again become the top auto manufacturing company in the world. The Republican candidates for president have been around our city and our state boasting about their ability to create jobs. We've heard all the rhetoric, but it doesn't reconcile with the facts. Take Governor Romney. Romney's entire business career was about profits, not jobs. The way he typically made money for his investors and himself was investing in companies, gutting the payroll, killing jobs, not creating them. Examples are in the news every day, and in just a minute, I'll get to an example that was in the news today. But right here in South Carolina, previously was announced, up in Gaffney, the Romney firm invested in Holston Burns Factory, where hard-working South Carolinians made photo albums and picture frames. What did Romney's group do? They did fine for themselves. They doubled the return on the investment on the backs of South Carolinians. They fired 150 workers in Gaffney, left our fellow citizens jobless, and then shipped some of the operations overseas. And in today's paper, the Post and Courier, an article <coughs> by, uh, an article, excuse the glare, yeah. just take me a second, an article uh, by David Rand of McClatchy Newspapers said the following, in today's Post and Courier. Headline, firm collapsed under Bain. Boston-based Bain Capital more than doubled its money on GS Industries, the foreign parent company of Georgetown Steel, one hour and five minutes up Highway 17. More than doubled its money on GS Industries, the former parent of Georgetown Steel, and Mitt Romney's leadership in the 1990s. Even as the steel manufacturing went to cut in its industry-wide operation, 1,750 jobs closed a division that had been operating for 100 years, and eventually the company sank into bankruptcy. Bain Capital spent $24.5 million to acquire it. They uh, made $58.4 million off the investments. Their partners earned multi-million dollar dividends from GS Industries and the annual management fees of about $900,000. By the time GS Industries filed bankruptcy protection in 2001, it owed $553.9 million in debts against an asset value of $395 million. In quotes, we were doing well and then Bain Capital bought us and they took everything they could out of the company without making the investments we needed to stay competitive, said James Sanderson, who has been with the mill in Georgetown since 1974 and served as his union president. They ran the company into bankruptcy. So we see news reports on a regular basis, but fresh this morning, a reminder of what the Romney firm did, they were making profits, not making jobs. President Obama is, is committed to creating jobs and urging American businesses and working with them to add jobs. But Bain Capital did, and one of the, the, the causes of the Great Recession was the, the hyper of Wall Street uh, activity that was creating huge wealth while job creation was not at the top of their agenda. It was all about profits, not about people, not about jobs, not about good, hard-working South Carolinians. These are the facts, and they're a lot more just like them. On the vital issue of jobs, 
as in all the issues, the American people deserve to know the facts. And the fact is, the greatest champion for job creation in our country is already at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and our state and our country will be best served by keeping him right there. Thank you very much. Uh, the fact is that the, what who appears to be right now the front runner's uh, business record was a record of making profits for their investment firm and not creating jobs. And in the instance of two South Carolina companies that I mentioned, actually had the effect of, of costing jobs and, uh, and in the instance of one, uh, running them into bankruptcy. So I think with, with all of the the hyperbole and all of the attacks on President Obama. And remember, President Obama's first responsibility and what he sought to do was to restore America's economy. And, and four years ago, uh, there were leaders saying in the Republican Party that their number one agenda was to defeat Barack Obama and to try to make him unsuccessful. So doing a four-year period when what we needed was bipartisanship, everyone working together, keeping their eye on the ball. The ball was American, uh, moving America forward. We had so many people having their eye on the wrong ball. They had their eye on the partisanship ball, uh, the eye on trying to, to, to defeat a, a president. Uh, what we have to remember in America is when we elect a president, what the citizens want us to do is to get behind the president and to make our country better. I think that's why you see the, the collective uh, ranking of, of Congress is, is, uh, is an institution is so low because Americans are fed up with this bitter partisanship approach. So I think I would say to the citizens of Charleston and, and to those, your question was, uh, those who supported uh, President Obama to, uh, with, with all the, the flack that's, that's coming out and all of the hyperbole and a lot of inf misinformation, to remember the facts. And the fact is that this president put together a recovery program for a historically difficult economic time, and now we are on the positive path to progress. I think the more we uh, understand and remember the great work that President Obama has done, then the more uh, excited supporters and those who didn't support him before or those who have been undecided will, will realize that we've got a leader, a leader in the White House, worked hard and successfully to turn our economy around and how's America moving on the right track. For senior citizens and young people like this and everyone in between. How come you chose today to come out in support of the president? Because all of the Republican candidates are here in Charleston and uh, and I wanted to, with them here, to, to know that this is a city where a majority of its residents voted for Barack Obama, a county where a majority of its residents voted for Barack Obama, and that there are lots of people here, uh, like me, the young people behind me, and many more, who believe in President Obama and recognize how he has faced the difficult challenges that our country has uh, been presented with over the last four years, uh, with courage and with intellect and with hard work and the progress that we've made on the economic. I wanted when the other when the candidates for the uh, Republican nomination were in our city, I wanted to use this moment to stand up for Barack Obama.